So I'd like to welcome everyone to our third webinar, Consumer Protection Tips and COVID-19 Scams, with Commissioner Lorelei Salas from the New York City Department of Consumer Affairs and Worker Protection. My name is David Knapp. I'm the Program Director for the New York City Department for the Aging Bill Payer Program, and I work inside our Elder Justice Unit. For the next hour or so, I will be your master of ceremonies, and we're so thrilled that you spent, took the time to spend with us. I hope everybody is safe and in good and healthy, good and healthy and in good spirits, and had an enjoyable holiday last Thursday. We want to thank you for tuning in and giving us your time. Before we, before we start, I want to take a moment to thank our partner PSS for hosting this series. They have seamlessly hosted this series for the last three sessions. The PSS staff have been amazing partners to work with. I just want to mention that this webinar is being pre-recorded and will be available after um, um, the session today. Um, so stay tuned. Before we begin, please grab a cup of coffee and settle in for the next hour. At this time, I'd like to introduce the Commissioner of the New York City Department for the Aging, Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, for some pre recorded opening remarks. Good afternoon. I'm Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, Commissioner of the New York City Department for the Aging. I'm very excited to welcome you to this new virtual series, Meet the Expert. This series focuses on an important issue, which is your financial health your financial empowerment, your financial literacy, and also giving you tools to combat financial fraud. Like physical health, financial health is a cornerstone of living a happy, successful, a relaxed life. With increased financial wellness, individuals can enjoy retirement and be better prepared for life for life's unexpected uh, challenges. At the core of financial health is knowledge and empowerment. Many times there are financial issues that older adults in New York face that on the surface seem daunting, like should I file for bankruptcy? How does a reverse mortgage work? Knowledge encompasses one's life's goals, challenges, and available financial resources are here to help you. Those experiencing financial wellness often experience a greater sense of empowerment, reduce stress and improve physical health. A house is only as strong as its foundation. Finances underlie each one of our daily lives. And it is important for us to create a space, a safe space where you can ask experts your most important questions. And that is why we designed the Meet the Expert series. Often people just don't know that these services exist to address their major concerns. This series is meant to replicate an intimate in-person chat. Through, through these series, you're gonna get expert advice um, on things that are part of our daily lives, choosing the right financial institution, when to seek out a financial advisor, the latest online smart budgeting tool. I'm looking forward to learning about that one. The do's and don'ts of refinancing your home and online banking security. And the recent COVID-19, those many scams and schemes that have, have emerged, just to name a few. Our goal is to help you to get to answer your questions and are on all of those pressing financial needs. Hopefully you will get the information that you need, access to an expert, as well as a few new tips on uh, how to use these valuable resources that you're getting. Join us, join the series. I'd like to thank PSS for helping us pilot this new series. Hope to see you at the Meet the Expert series enjoy it, and we will test and see how safe and secure you feel after this series. Thank you very much. 
So thank you, Commissioner. So before we get into uh, our main topic of, for the day, I'd like to uh, remind everyone that we have uh, an active chat available. So you can ask any general questions in the chat. Today we have DIFTA and Department of Consumer and Worker Protection staff monitoring and we'll answer your questions in real time. In terms of the questions for those that have visited us before, make sure that as a rule, that they're brief and general. Our experts will not be giving specific individual legal or financial advice. Once again, we are recording this webinar. Following today's webinar, we will be sending out resources mentioned in today's presentation, along with the brief survey and a link to this webinar. So before I welcome Commissioner Salas, I'd like to highlight some of her accomplishments and experiences. Next slide, please. So Commissioner Salas was appointed Commissioner of the New York City Department for Consumer and Worker Protection, formerly Department of Consumer Affairs in May of 2016. She's an accomplished labor law advocate who has been committed to fighting inequality throughout her career. As the Director of Legal Services at Catholic Migration Services, she supervised the immigration, housing, and employment legal services programs designed to help immigrants and refugees increase their access to justice. She worked at Make the Road New York, directing litigation in the areas of immigration, housing, and employment law. In 2009, Ms. Uh, Salas was nominated by President Obama as the Wage and Hour Administrator at the United States Department of Labor, which to me is amazing. She earned her JD from Benjamin Cardoso Law School and is admitted to practice law in New York State and in federal court. Uh, Commissioner Salas is also a proud CUNY graduate, obtaining her AA degree from LaGuardia Community College and her BA from Hunter College. And I, and for each of these chats, we, we ask our speakers to give us some fun facts. So she gave us actually two really fantastic fun facts. Uh, this is the one that I love the most. So she loves to dance. And once when visiting a senior center to give a consumer affairs presentation, she saw a group of ladies dancing salsa. She loves to dance and she joined them and everyone had a great time and she rem remembers it uh, fondly, which to me is just uh, epitomizes everything I know about her and the presentations that I've seen before. So now without further ado, I'm pleased to present Commissioner Salas. Hi everyone, uh, thank you so much David for the introduction. I want to first thank uh, the Department of, Aid, of the Aging staff um, and Commissioner Cortez Vasquez for uh, her leadership and for creating this very important space um, so that our New Yorkers can learn more about the programs and services that the city agencies and others provide. Um, I also want to thank Presbyterian Senior Services for co-hosting this event. Um, and of course, my staff, um, I think Tanjila Rahman is, is uh, on the call today and she will be helping me in case anyone has questions that cannot be answered today, we'll follow up. And uh, she will also help to add links and contact information when needed. Um, so a couple of things first, um, of course, I hope also that everyone uh, had a very safe and healthy Thanksgiving celebration. Mine was very, very quiet, um, but lovely. And, um, you know, these are times when we need each other even more. So I am really, uh, really glad to be able to be here and provide some updates on, on the programs that we have, um, especially post COVID. It's very important that we remain um, very responsive to the most urgent needs of New Yorkers. And we try to do that, but we need your help. So I'll be glad to hear if you have feedback on some of our programs or you have questions or if you have suggestions as to how we can do things better. Um, but um, let me just tell you a couple of things about the agency first. Um, uh, generally, um, I'll go over some of our programs and then we can go into some questions that um, I know um, Mary, I think, uh, already has. Um, so if we can go to the next slide. Excellent. 
Um, so our agency, the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection, um, it is um, a small agency for city standards. We have about um, less than 350 employees by now, um, but we have a very large mission, a uh, very broad mission of both protecting um, workers, protecting consumers, and also protecting the financial health of New Yorkers. So let me first talk a little bit about our Office of Financial Empowerment, which is the office that manages very key programs that help every New Yorker to improve their financial health. This office has been um, in place for over a decade, and one of the um, key programs that we uh, manage, that we coordinate, is the uh, Financial Empowerment Centers. These centers are an amazing resource for New Yorkers, uh, regardless of immigration status, uh, regardless of your income. Anyone who is 18 years of, uh, of age or older can access these very important services. And I'll say a little more about that next, but I also want to say that in addition to the financial empowerment centers, we have uh, a program every year um, and it's um, the free tax preparation services program that we run every tax season. As you probably know, this year we had a very long tax season because of the extensions we had um, in order to file taxes. Um, but this is a program that is um, um, accessible uh, to New Yorkers depending on their income. Um, if New Yorkers, uh, for instance, for this, for 2020, all New Yorkers who make less than $68,000 will be able to have their taxes done for free with uh, professional trained IRS certified volunteers. Um, it is uh, a really important program because our uh, counselors, our uh, tax preparers um, have only your best interest in mind, which is to help you keep as many dollars as possible in your pockets and to get all of the credits that you're entitled to. The office also does very important work uh, on researching uh, the financial health of New Yorkers. And in the last couple of years, we have published several uh, reports and on data, uh, near neighborhood specific data in New York City that uh, documents the struggles student loan debt borrowers are going through experiencing um, in order to be able to pay back their debt. Um, so it is an office, again, that does work that uh, touches New Yorkers' financial lives. Um, and I will urge everyone to visit and make an appointment with a financial empowerment center. I myself um, met with a financial counselor a few years back uh, in a previous job. Um, I was already an attorney, but uh, somehow struggling to make ends meet between my large student loan debt and my bills and having a financial counselor who, um, who is confidential, who is on your side, it's really, really amazing. And I know we'll be able to talk a little more in detail about that um, uh, during the quest, uh, question and answer period. Um, so, okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, Scams. I know that um, this is probably not the first um, webinar where you've been already uh, discussing um, scams, consumer protection issues. Um, in New York City, we have a strong consumer protection law uh, that has been in place for over 50 years, and my office in, is in charge of enforcing that law at the city level. Um, as you probably know, there are also state laws to protect consumers from scams. I'll say just a couple of things about this. Um, very, very important that you continue to get your information from trusted sources. That is the reason why this type of webinar is so important because we want to make sure you all uh, New York residents have access to accurate information on how you know, what kinds of benefits are out there that you may be eligible for? What um, is the most up-to-date information on COVID-19 and how to protect yourself? Um, we want to make sure, again, that you follow nyc.gov or the CDC 
uh, if you want to find out whether there are any tests or vaccines that are available. Some of the things we heard in the last few months uh, were about um, uh, businesses that were selling online uh, pur uh, purported uh, COVID-19 cures. Um, be very careful because in that case, not only can you lose your money, but you could also uh, hurt your, uh, your health. So always go back to the official sources of information um, and don't respond immediately to unsolicited calls, texts, or emails. That is one of the biggest, um, um, I would say, mistakes we hear people make is that they receive calls or um, uh, communications that seem to be from the IRS, from the bank, uh, from uh, the New York City Department of Health, and, and oftentimes um, they're asked for private personal information over the phone or over email or over text. Um, just don't be too quick to respond to those unsolicited communications. Go to the official sources, go to the official website or official phone numbers of those agencies and offices and you contact them via those numbers. So those are two, um, two things that you should remember. Um, the, the one thing I would say um, is that for any type of online fraud, as you can imagine, it is even more difficult sometimes to repair the damage once the damage is done. So, so be very careful and visit our website for additional tips. Um, but I want to go now to the next slide and. Um, just uh, remind you that um, as a consumer protection agency for the last 50 years, you know, we, what we do, our bread and butter has always been to mediate complaints from consumers. And so if you have an issue with a business where whether you bought a product that was uh, damaged or whether uh, the company is refusing to give you a refund for an item you purchased and you relied on that refund policy, uh, you can call us. We have media, um, we have intake personnel, we have mediators, we have investigators and attorneys who handle those cases. Um, and you know, it, you don't have to necessarily know that for sure that there was a violation of the law. If if something doesn't seem right to you, if it seems unfair, just feel free to contact us. We, it will be up to us to help figure out whether there really is a violation of the law and if we can help. So err on the side of getting in touch with us. Um, again, uh, just a reminder that all of our programs and services are available to consumers and workers regardless of immigration status. So no one will ask you for that information. It's irrelevant to the work that we do. So there's no need to fear uh, that uh, your information could end up in the wrong hands because we don't even have a place to record that information, even if you gave it to us accidentally. So I just want to reassure New Yorkers that they can contact us with questions or to file complaints. Uh, and as you can see, you can call um, also file a complaint online at nyc.gov slash dcwp, but you can call us at 311. For everything that I'm speaking about today, 311 is still um, the the ACS number to remember, um, we have language access and, and individuals who speak different languages, so that should not be an obstacle. Um, and for um, our complaint intake process right now, everything is done online. We're trying to limit access to our offices in person, so please do reach, reach us online or over the phone. Um, next slide, please. Um, and we have an Office of Labor Policy and Standards. This is the office that um, uh, basically was housed at DCWP uh, about four years ago when I first came to the agency. Um, it is uh, very near and dear to my heart because my background has always been on labor law enforcement. And it's an office that has built up over the last four years to enforce very, very important laws to protect all workers in New York City. One of the laws that I think people need to keep in mind is the paid sick leave law, paid safe and sick leave law, which is a very important life-saving benefit, especially now in times of COVID-19. People who are um, infected uh, with the virus or who may be living in a house with someone else who is infected and who have to isolate, they need to remember they have rights 
they most likely, uh, unless their employer is really, really small, like four employees or less, and their income is less than a million a year, for the most part, they'll be covered and they'll, have, um, they'll be able to get paid for the days they have to stay home. Um, our city law has been in the books for six years, but only recently the state and federal governments recognize the importance of this benefit and pass their own laws. So it is a little bit complicated sometimes to, to be able to give uh, people a very um, uh, sustained explanation of their rights under, under the paid sick leave laws. Uh, but we urge you to call us at 311 or to email us at olps.dca.nyc.gov because depending on the employer size, we'll, you, know, you might have um, even uh, more benefits uh, under the paid sick leave laws. Um, there's also an emergency paid sick leave law for COVID-19 only. So the state passed this uh, emergency law uh, recently, um, not as recently, but in March. Um, but very important uh, that people know this benefit exists so that they can stay home safely and without putting others at risk. Please call us. There are other laws that we also enforce, um, like the right to, to know your schedule in advance if you work for the fast food and the retail industries, the right to get paid. If you are a freelancer, you still have a right to get paid on time. We help a lot of freelancers recover the money they're owed under contracts uh, that they enter into. And we have an office of um, a paid care division, which is an office that is dedicated just to, to the paid care industry workers' uh, best interests. So uh, we help domestic workers, home health aides, and uh, we have a working group with um, uh, advocates and legal service organizations to develop a strategy that would help our paid care workers in New York City live uh, lives with uh, respect and dignity and in, in their jobs too, right? Um, so um, if you are a paid care worker, whether it is a domestic worker or a home health aide, you can give us a call. We do help enforce your rights. And just, just a new thing that happened under the law, under the updates of the basic leave law is that domestic workers now have the same benefits as other workers in under, other industries and they can take um, a minimum of five days, six days a year, uh, uh, and those have to be paid. So those are important updates, um, and I'll be happy to go into more detail during Q&A. Um, can we go to the next slide, or is that the last slide for now? I think. Okay, that is the last slide. So, um, so I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. David, you're on mute. Thank you, Commissioner, for all of these wonderful updates and all of the uh, amazing work that, you're, that your um, agency does. Um, before we get uh, into the q and I just want to remind everybody that we've been posting information in the chat, just so you have it now, but that an email will be going out following the chat with all of these wonderful links and um, phone numbers to all of these amazing services that they're providing. So please don't worry if you don't ca catch it in the chat. If you, it, it's right now we're putting it in there just so if you have an immediate thing and you wanna go in on today, you could go, but it will all be coming out after the chat. Um, I wanna introduce Barry Langer. Barry Langer is a bill payer, uh, a dedicated bill payer volunteer. And he's also um, a wonderful volunteer for New York City Department for the Aging. And he will be um, asking um, questions. So please put your questions into the chat or to the Q&A section so we can begin to um, ask the commissioner questions. So thank you all. Go hey, ahead, Barry. Hello, Commissioner. So uh, let me start with uh, question number one. How can a financial counselor help someone living on a fixed income? Thank you, Barry. Oh, you're on yeah. mute. Oh. Yeah, here you go. There you go. You're good now. Okay, you're okay good. Okay. Uh, thank you for that question. So I, I really love talking about the financial empowerment centers um, because, like I said earlier, it is a really amazing resource for all New Yorkers. 
I always say that people who have um, really high incomes are able to hire all kinds of professionals to help them manage their finances, right? Accountants and uh, financial gurus and um, attorneys. And for our New Yorkers, our hardworking New Yorkers, we do have the Financial uh, Empowerment Center counselors who provide free professional one-on-one -on -one financial counseling and coaching to support New Yorkers. Um, they are all um, individuals who um, are, you know, it's not free. Uh, it is a no cost to New Yorkers, but it's not a free service because these individuals are getting paid to do this work, right? It's a serious job for them. Um, you can trust that when you go to a financial empowerment center, it's a center that has, um, it's being supported by the city, not just with financial resources, right? We fund the, these programs throughout the city, but we also manage the quality um, and we do a lot of quality control to make sure all counselors are always up to date with the best information, up to date with all of the most current relief, the federal benefits that have come down um, due to COVID-19. So we have them in all five boroughs. We have about 30 to 33 centers. I can't rem remember the exact number right now. Of course, right now, uh, and you know, since March, many of them transitioned to purely virtual services, right? To make sure everyone stays safe. But we've seen some centers begin to reopen um, as of a few weeks ago, always trying to limit the in-person appointments to make sure people, you know, we can do it in a safe way. Uh, but you can uh, receive financial counseling over the phone. Like I said, there are no immigration or income restrictions. Call 311 or visit nyc.gov slash talk money. Um, and again, this is for everyone. You know, I mentioned uh, earlier, I visited a, a center about a few years back and it was very helpful to be able to understand, uh, you know, what was the best strategy to deal with my debt um, and how to prioritize paying down my credit cards. So I, I urge all New Yorkers to make an appointment with a Financial Empowerment Center counselor. Very good, thank you. Uh, next question is, what options do people struggling with medical bills have? Um, so I would say uh, similar to any other type of debt, right? Um, you can go to speak with a financial counselor who is going to go over all of your finances, both uh, the type of debt that you have and your income, whatever is coming in, right? they are going to uh, help you understand uh, all your entire financial uh, situation. They'll help you create a budget, um, develop a strategy for managing the medical bills. Uh, our counselors actually get on the phone with your, um, your creditors and they help, oftentimes they help negotiate and reduce your debt. Um, there are also sometimes programs that people are not always aware of, but a lot of the doctors and um, not doctors, sorry, the hospitals, the large hospitals, uh, medical facilities have programs in place where they can forgive a lot of the, the, uh, the expenses that individuals who are maybe underemployed or unemployed incurred on, and they don't always use those funds. And so counselors and other advocates are able to push the, these hospitals to, to try to use those funds first before, before they come um, and send you a bill. So, and they also, uh, the counselors can also help you deal with the collection agencies. So definitely make, again, I, and I'm gonna keep saying this, but make an appointment with a financial counselor. During COVID-19, we actually had, um, my office prepared a template letter that could be sent to debt collection agencies there is a rule in place in the city that says you can ask in writing the debt collection agency to cease collections uh, and they have to stop. Um, and if they continue to try to collect, they can um, then receive a violation. Um, this is done just, it, this is not like forever, right? But for us, uh, it was important that this, um, the consumers had this option during the COVID-19 crisis and that rule is in place uh, until the end of the pandemic. So do reach out, our counselors can help you figure out how to deal with your medical bills. 
Very good. Um, next question is, how can people find the right credit card or other financial product that works for them? Who can help them understand the terms and explain how to responsibly use credit? Yes, um, so this is, a, this is a, a very good question. Um, I think that um, just like with any other product that you are interested in, you need to do your research, right? First, you need to figure out um, what cards are in the market that you may be eligible for. And then like really review what the terms are for those cards. Um, our counselors are not gonna be able to say to you, um, we recommend this card for you, right? That they're not about doing product endorsement, but they can tell you though, you know, understand that, you know, like what the fine print says, right? understand like or they can help you um, evaluate two or three cards that you're looking at and explain to you what the benefits are of or disadvantages of the cards right uh, so it's very important that you shop around right compare the options that you read the fine print again um a lot of people myself included i don't always i mean who has the time to really read all of the terms right that are on the credit card like invitations and disclosures but but there are some key terms that you need to know, right? So oftentimes they say it's a very low APR interest rate, but it's only, um, it only lasts a few months, right? So you need to know that even if you transfer your balance from a high interest uh, card into that new card, you only have a few months to pay it off and then the interest will kick in. Um, other just common sense uh, tips that we tell uh, consumers is to, make sure that they spend only what they can afford. The best practice is for you to pay off your credit card bill in full every month, right? Now, that's not always possible, right? Uh, oftentimes, you know, especially during times when people, uh, you know, either have a job loss and don't have enough savings, or I spoke before about freelancers not getting paid on time. A lot of people have to live off their credit cards and, and that, that can get into serious trouble that way. But some of the advice that we give is about trying to pay off your balance in full. Or if you are at the point where you can't pay it in full, stop using the card, put it away until you're able to bring down that balance. Um, also limit the number of credit cards you have in your wallet. Most people only need one credit card. Um, so, um, you know, it's better if you don't have too many cards to, to balance and to, to keep track of. Um, Try and opt out of receiving credit card offers. Um, you can do that if you go to optoutprescreen.com um, because you, you know, if you are on that list, you'll continue to get credit card offers. And then, you know, again, meet with a financial counselor. If you, your credit card debt has gotten out of control, they're going to help you again prioritize which are the ones that you should pay off first. And again, they can help you negotiate down. If you want to close down a couple of cards, they can help you with that. They, they were very successful during the, uh, the last few months, I would say, as the financial crisis you know, hit all of us, right? Um, it also hit a lot of those companies that we owe money to, and they were willing to settle uh, oftentimes for 30%, uh, 40% of what the debt was. So. Just talk to a counselor, you have nothing to lose and they can help you manage that debt. Very good. Uh, who can help individuals understand their options when they are considering filing for bankruptcy because they are overwhelmed with debt and bills? So that is uh, certainly you can, um, again, um, it's not like they are superheroes, but they are definitely well prepared, these financial counselors to help you with that. Um, they will, uh, oftentimes uh, people come to a financial counselor, let's say after they uh, had to go bankrupt and they have to build up their credit again, or they have really terrible, uh, a really terrible credit score. They, uh, counselors can um, help you figure out the steps you need to take to improve that credit score. Um, but we also work very closely with some free uh, legal services organizations and so, if the counselor uh, that is working with you determines that you really, your best option really is to file for bankruptcy, they can refer you to these, um, this legal services organization who can then help you file for free. 
um, a bankruptcy uh, proceeding. Um, but, but also very important that even after you take that step, very important that in order to rebuild your, uh, your credit and in order to rebuild your finances that you keep at it with financial empowerment center meetings and appointments. Um, you know, it, this is not a one visit is going to fix it, right? You have to have several um, appointments in order to really show progress on um, meeting your financial goals. Very good. Uh, how can individuals who are homebound or otherwise unable to visit uh, an empowerment center get financial counseling? Yes, yeah, so um, actually because of the pandemic, we basically transition um, all, all and most of our services uh, to be virtual. And so there is no problem whatsoever with um, being able to access our services from the comfort of your home. Um, you can again uh, call us at 311 and uh, say talk money or visit nyc.gov slash talk money to book an appointment. But certainly you can, um, you can be sure that we use um, um, safe um, telephone and video uh, mechanisms to, to do the counseling and that is really not an issue. So please do uh, call us. Very good. Uh, who can assist homebound seniors to file their federal taxes? So um, one, the other program that I mentioned earlier uh, was the virtual tax preparation or the free tax preparation services. Um, it's really, it, the emphasis on the virtual services was this year, right? Because of the pandemic, obviously. Um, but before, even before the pandemic, we also had virtual services. Now, um, we have IRS certified volunteer income tax assistance or VIDA and tax counseling for the elderly, TCE, volunteer preparers. They can video conference with you to help you prepare your, um, your tax return. So for the 2021 tax season, which believe it or not, we are just beginning, even though we just finished the 2020 tax season, um, all New Yorkers who earned $68,000 or less in 2020, right, are eligible for the in-person uh, and virtual free tax preparation services. Um, but uh, New Yorkers who want to access this program, they will need access to a computer or a tablet or a smartphone and stable internet connection for the free um, virtual tax preparation services. And you can um, learn more about this at nyc.gov slash tax prep. Very good. Uh, who can help me understand my rights as a worker in New York City? So um, the Office of um, Labor Policy and Standards or OLPS for short, um, has is staffed with uh, outreach, with intake, with investigators, with attorneys, and the, the team is super dedicated to making sure our New York City laws that protect workers are being complied with. Um, I said earlier that we have a paid care division that helps you, um, especially uh, helps domestic workers and home health aides. Uh, to really make sure that they, you know, they get the, the, all the benefits that the laws afford them. Um, we recently did, um, not, not so recently, more like a year and a half ago or two years ago, we did uh, a full audit of the home health aid industry, and we found rampant violations of the paid sick leave law. Um, so as a result of that, we actually uh, were able to raise standards in the industry by having a lot of the, these agencies pay the money that they owe workers um, and improve their standards. So uh, we do want you to reach out to us. Again, the same number, believe it or not, 311. You just say you're a worker and you have questions about your rights in the workplace and they're gonna transfer you to us. And then we'll be able to answer all of your questions or take your complaints. Um, and um, it's really worth, uh, again, repeating it that um, if you work in New York City, you have all the rights that come with the laws that are in place, regardless of immigration status, regardless of the language that you speak, regardless of whether you're paying, getting paid on, on the payroll or in cash, you still have those rights. 
just call us and and please remember especially now that you have rights to stay home if you're sick and you must do that so that we actually are able to contain the the spread of the infection very good so we have been getting some questions during this seminar uh, and i think you kind of touched on one of the questions which was are there special services for immigrants and you kind of said you kind of touched it but maybe you want to go a little more detail yeah um so Again, you know, we don't differentiate, right? Like uh, all of the laws that protect consumers and workers uh, treat all workers and consumers the same, regardless of their status. I would say that we do have materials translated into as many as 14 languages uh, for, for our tips and our, and our summaries of the laws. But we also have um, recently um, done some oral translations of uh, indigenous languages. We have four or five indigenous languages. So we're always seeking to you know, expand our, our, our services and access to New Yorkers. Um, but it's really important that um, I would say one thing about workers and um, recently retaliation issues, right? A lot of workers who may be immigrant or um, who may be perceived as being undocumented, sometimes their employers use their status as a threat to keep them quiet when you know, let's say a worker says, but I noticed you didn't pay me for my sick days. Um, we take retaliation very seriously. Um, and in the last few months, we had two workers who were fired by their uh, employers because um, not only did they get sick on the job and try to take a day off, but um, they were denied their pay and they were also fired. Um, this is in violation of the law. And uh, we immediately, uh, and you know, um, use a fast track investigation and we're, we're able to resolve those cases and get the employees back their jobs and also get them um, not just their jobs at the same uh, salary, the same hours they had before, but the uh, employers also had to pay penalties and the money that the, the workers lost during those uh, weeks that they were fired illegally. So, so that is, I think, a very important message for immigrant workers that we are on your side. I mean. Again, like the laws protect you regardless, and you need to come forward and let us know if you believe that um, you know uh, your employer is not treating you fairly. Very good. I think David, you had a couple of questions. That yes, you Commissioner. Had? So uh, one of the questions is um, about PPE. If I'm a frontline worker and I'm my choice is coming to work unsafely or not work, um, what, wh where would one go? Where would, where would a worker, a frontline worker, or someone working at a grocery store, a bodega, or even at a hospital that's kind of forced into these uh, um, situations go to get guidance and, and or go to um, get help if, if one has negative consequences from that? That was a question. Yes, thank you. That, thank you because that question really brings up a very important issue. We, being very involved with other city agencies around the reopening guidelines. Uh, these are guidelines that were set by the state, but that the city reissued. And it basically tells businesses that can reopen, right? Um, that in which way they have to reopen, right? They have to give workers PPE, uh, which is personal protective equipment. Workers cannot be charged for it. That's something that the employer has to pay for. And by the way, the city has been providing a lot of free face coverings to employers so that they don't have to deal with expense of it. Uh, but workers have a right to, to have those uh, provided by the employers. And the employers also have to provide a very safe and healthy work environment by doing a number of things. They have to do health intakes every day of every worker that comes to work. I myself, if I have to go to work tomorrow in the office, I have to actually answer a few questions over email and, and send it to my human capital office to make sure that I don't have uh, symptoms of the virus or I didn't test positive, right? So employers have to let workers stay home if they're sick. I have to, as a worker, as an employee, I have to be given the opportunity to wash my hands frequently or to have access to hand sanitizers. So those are all requirements, but you're right that some employers are not complying with that. And we need to hear where that is happening. If you call 311, you do not even have to give your name. And you can just call us an anonymous complaint. You could even be a consumer who observed 
that a particular business is not following the guidelines. And believe me, that is not just going to hurt that particular business uh, workers, it's going to hurt everyone. So we need to hear from anyone, workers, consumers, other business owners who are also afraid that their businesses will shut down if the next door business does not comply with the laws. We will send inspectors who will go there and they don't, again, they don't have to say that they're responding to a complaint. They just have to go and observe what is happening. So we do have staff from several different agencies who respond to these complaints and they go in person to, to observe what is happening in those businesses. Now, if you did, uh, let's say, uh, tell your employer, uh, this is, you know, you're not complying with the rules, you're supposed to be giving people personal protective equipment, I cannot expose myself, and your employer still refuses to provide it to you, or fires you, or you have to leave because they're not giving you the equipment, you need to call us because we would be, we might be able to like, first of all, stop that from happening, right? And we want to be helpful to not just you, but you your co-workers, but also it, it's very likely, and I say very likely just because I don't think I've seen it tested yet, but I believe that it's also a violation of state law. And so um, retaliation is punished by different in different ways. So please do reach out to us um, and we will help you. Yes, I, I, I just wanted to, to also just ask uh, this on behalf of the Department for the Aging so we have many we have many older adults that um, we feel social workers, as an example, feel would benefit from financial counseling, um, but are are skeptical. Uh, a lot of times, what we hear is that they are going to ask their neighbors, their friends, someone in the community first, and they don't really um, see the value of financial counseling. Can you speak to that? Because you have a lot of people on this on this webinar from our network. Um, what do you see for, for instance, for low income individuals or or older adults on fixed incomes? What do you see as the real benefit of the Office of Financial Empowerment? So I will say a couple of things that I'm thinking about right now. Um, one of them is um, sometimes, um, and what we've seen in some of our consumer protection cases is that. Uh, sometimes uh, older adults are co-signers of loans for their relatives or a child or a grandchild who needs to get a student loan debt. I mean, sorry, uh, get a student loan, right? Or uh, a, a, a daughter or son who wants to get a car. There's times when the, uh, we've seen older adults uh, really get into financial uh, uh, difficulties because they were co-signers of loans or sometimes they, didn't, they were not aware they were co-signing something. Um, and for that, you need to come to us. Um, I would also say that um, other, other reasons why you should talk to financial counselor is that um, your credit scores, um, that is, credit scores are very important for everyone. I mean, we all need a good credit score for almost anything, whether you want to rent a, an apartment, your landlord's gonna look at it. Uh, even for affordable housing, right? You need to go through a whole credit check. We actually have a specific program that is just with uh, the um, Housing Preservation Department uh, where we help people prepare to get access to um, affordable housing. So that is very, very important. Um, and you know, just because you are in a fixed income, I mean, again, we've seen people who are retired, who still have student loan debt, like huge amounts of it, you know, and they sometimes see their, their social security checks garnished. So you really need to talk to our counselors who are uh, very, very well um, educated on all of uh, student loan debt relief that exists under federal law. Um, I think that's sort of like some of the reasons. I would also say one more thing is that Sometimes you don't know, you just don't know what you don't know. We had a, a client who came in who was having difficulties paying her bills. It turned out that this individual was, uh, had a disability. Uh, our financial counselor was able to get her into the right programs and to have her apply to the benefits she was entitled to, she was eligible for. She received a check of over $100,000. It was just completely not anything that she went to the financial counselors for, right? But the financial counselors, again, 
are trained to look at your entire picture and to see what else is there that could be of help to you. This was life changing for this particular client, life changing, right? So um, again, you have nothing to lose by making an appointment with a financial counselor, but you can miss out on some uh, benefits or opportunities that there are for you. Thank you so much. I think that we've, I, I don't see any more questions in the chat. I just well, wonder. There were uh, some that I do think, and you answered one of them that I think that probably are kind of specific and they probably should go to a financial counselor and not raised here. So I just want to say to those people that we didn't, I'm not ignoring them, but I think the answer for some of them regarding a particular uh, phone bill and so forth, they should probably be reaching out to a specific counselor. Right. Okay. That, that I did see them, but I think they belong to get the special, special, unique answer from a specialist. So I'll let you go, Dave. Answer. Okay. Thank you, Barry. And I, I wanted to thank the the commissioner for the the amazing information that you gave us. I think that it's very helpful. I I think that. A lot of times we're not aware of what the services are and that's part of the reason why we did the series is to give people lots of resources and to encourage them to utilize those resources when they need them. I want to thank you and your entire staff that had worked tirelessly on behalf of older New Yorkers and New Yorkers in general in the city. Um, did you want to did you want to end with a story or something? Uh, I, I know you wanted to share. We have, I think we have a few minutes left. Did you want to share? Um, something? I, I mean, Maybe just one thing. I know that um, I've been in government work for the majority of my, my career, uh, spent maybe a few years working in the nonprofit sector, but most of the time I've worked for both the state, the federal, and now the city government. Um, and what really inspired me to get into public service work was, um, honestly, I've been very fortunate to be able to do the work that I love. Uh, I came to this country uh, from Peru when I was 19 years old, and it was a steep road ahead of me. I had to learn to speak English first. I had to, you know, put myself to school, but I was able to actually do work that makes me feel really good, and I want to just give back to my community, and I, you know, I think again, like, you will find that a lot of us who are working in city government are really trying to do our best, and I would just encourage you, if you have feedback for us, if you have ideas, suggestions, we're always here to, to take those and to learn, uh, to learn from you. Um, we need to be, stay very much in touch to what's happening in our communities. And if you see anything in, in your neighborhood, in your community, where you feel it's a new type of scam or deception, we want to hear from you, right? Um, it's, you know, I see it as our mission to continue to stay in touch and responsive and it's hard sometimes to get agencies to be nimble but we try to do that and so i really appreciate the time if you're listening to this obviously you are already engaged in trying to improve your own uh your health your financial health um and i hope that you can uh if you have a friend the, the most helpful for us would be if you have a friend or a relative who may be um able to use this information just um share it with them um, but thank you again for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you so much. Before we end, I just wanted to like highlight uh, our upcoming chats. We have four more chats left uh, and then we'll be um, regrouping uh, and we'll be presenting new chats um, in the new year. So on Thursday at 1 p.m., uh, we have a wonderful chat, changing the vision of getting a job during the pandemic with um, the New York City Department uh, for the Aging. Um, Maria Serrano, um, she has years of experience actually um, helping uh, individuals to think through what they need in order to secure the job of their, of their dreams. Um, she's going to come and talk about hot jobs and what um, employers are looking for in the age of COVID. Uh, on December 8th, uh, we have Innovative Solutions for Preventing Pandemic Fraud. Uh, with Liz Lowy, a former uh, DA of New York City DA. Um, they have a wonderful product and, they, and they're going to come and talk to us about um, how safe the internet is or isn't and what you can do to prevent yourself from becoming frauded. On December 10th, we have a fantastic speaker um, who's going to be talking about the ins and outs of home mortgages with the focus on reverse mortgages. And last but not least, um, on December uh, uh, 17th, 
We'll have Bridging the Gap Financial Health and Technology with someone who has developed an online app for matching you or a loved one with the perfect kind of financial institution. So we hope that you tune in um, to all of these or the ones that make sense to you. And we wish all of you a, a good rest of the day and a good week. Thanks.